it's my great honor and a distinct pleasure and privilege to introduce to you Secretary Gary Locke. Well, thank you very much, to Dilawar, for the really nice introduction. And uh, uh, didn't know that you followed the Washington Post from from over here. Uh, but it's it's amazing to see so many uh, people here, and and also a lot of dear friends and longtime friends as well. And uh, I'm really pleased that uh, Congressman Mike Honda was able to join us from Washington D.C. Now that they're uh, they were sworn in, and and now on a, on a couple weeks of recess before they really get uh, back to work. Also, uh, John Chung, our state controller. Where's, where's John? We need to have everybody stand up. I know that he was here earlier, but uh, Mike, why don't you at least raise your hand so everybody can see you? You know, uh, you're running every two years, and it's, uh, I know you were just elected, but we've got to keep you uh, foremost in the minds of, of uh, the people here uh, in Silicon Valley. Uh, also, uh, Mayor Sid Espinoza of Microsoft. Uh, where, where's, where's Sid? I know that he was here as well. Just uh, mayor of Palo Alto for two days, so uh, that's, that's great to see more people of color assuming positions uh, in high office. And of course, your state assembly, um, and, uh, Paul Fong. I know Paul's here, so thank you very much. You, know, you just heard from uh, uh, Delauer, uh, who's uh, uh, the economic development chair uh, of the president's Advisory Commission on Asian Americans and Pacific Islanders. We also have from Las Vegas another commission member, uh, Rosalita Lee. Rosalita, where are you? There you are. Thank you very much for joining us. I know that Daphne, uh, who are, is the chair of the commission, uh, spoke earlier, but we also need to pay tribute to the person who really makes the commission work on a day-to-day -day, uh, basis. And uh, so, uh, uh, oh, where are you? Where, where, uh, 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 Kieran? Kieran? Uh, Ahuja, Kiran Ahuja, uh, our executive director, so thank you very much. Uh, it's really great to be here, and it's great to uh, co-chair the White House Initiative on Asian Americans and Pacific Islanders, along with Secretary of Education Arne Duncan. Uh, but given my day job as Secretary of Commerce, uh, there's no way that I would not be here at this summit on entrepreneurship and small business growth. Uh, this summit will be valuable for anyone considering starting or growing a small business. And that means that this summit is going to be very important for America as a whole because entrepreneurship is such a key driver of job growth. Consider the fact that firms less than five years old accounted for nearly all of the net new jobs in the private sector between 1980 and 2005. I'm going to say that again. Firms less than five years old accounted for nearly all of the net increased employment in the private sector between 1980 and 2005. Yeah, we got big companies like Boeing that have a lot of jobs, but they've had a lot of downturns and a lot of layoffs. So all the net new jobs that are still in America today are the result of, and come from firms less than five years old. Here's another aspect of it. Nearly 40% of our nation's employment, nearly 40% of our nation's employment come from companies that did not even exist in 1980. So this is the power and the promise of entrepreneurship. And in these first few days of 2011, the Obama administration's focus remains where it was in 2010 and in 2009 on helping U.S. businesses grow so they can hire more people. And there's no doubt that this pursuit will rely heavily on the success of the Asian American Pacific Islander community and its businesses. Every day, two million Asian Americans and Pacific Islanders breathe life into small businesses, the very engines that grow our economy. And there are more than one million AAPI-owned firms in the United States generating well over $300 billion in sales. And actually, the AAPI firms employ 50% of all workers of minority firms. We in the Obama administration want to make it easier for you to grow, to create, and to hire. And that's why we've assembled many of our experts from the administration here uh, to talk about innovation, data and technology, and to offer guidance on job growth and business development. There's a great legacy of 
Asian Americans and Pacific Islander entrepreneurs, innovators, and small business owners in America. And the role of us in the Obama administration is to smooth the way for that long line of accomplishment to continue. Since President Obama was elected, Asian Americans and Pacific Islanders nationwide have seen significant gains in employment and achieved new heights in business engagement. But that success did not come easily. And no one here needs reminding that our failing economy desperately needed swift and bold action when President Obama took office. So within the first 90 days, the administration passed the Recovery Act. And there's been a lot of uh, concern or criticism and disputes about the Recovery Act. But let me set the record straight. The Recovery Act put people to work building hundreds of billions of dollars of critical infrastructure, like bridges and roads and even internet connections, high-speed internet connections. You know, those, those people building the roads and repairing the bridges, they shop in malls, eat in restaurants, and support many other businesses as well. And they're doing work that has to be done sooner or later. And the longer you wait, the more expensive it gets. So we're taking care of the needs of our country and putting people back to work. Half of the Recovery Act was actually by way of tax cuts for working families. $800 for joint filers, $400 extra for single filers. Again, putting money back into the economy and supporting families and buying the groceries and buying the shoes and the clothes for our children. The Recovery Act also provided critical resources to cash strapped states like here in California to pay for those safety net programs like medical care for seniors and children and even extended unemployment benefits. While people are wor out of work, they take that unemployment benefits to pay the rent, to put food on the table for their children. And that again supports local businesses. And of course, uh, we also had a lot of grants for technology, research and development in clean energy and biotech and on health IT. Within the Asian American Pacific Islander community, the Recovery Act has actually enabled some 8 thousand AAPI owned businesses to receive over five billion dollars worth of new loans and that money has been used to invest in new employees and new tools for innovation and invention but also to encourage the expansion of small and large businesses alike since the recovery act we've also implemented a variety of tax cuts to help AAPI businesses if you launch a small business you can deduct the full ten thousand dollars of your startup costs and if you need to buy new equipment, go ahead, because under the recently ta uh, uh, passed legislation that was signed by uh, the president, uh, you can write off 100% of all your investments in capital and other equipment that you make through the end of 2011. You don't have to depreciate it out over 20 years. You can take a full write-off on it all at once. And that's going to save you tax money, money that you can then put in to hiring people and that tax advantage will provide the incentive for you to make those investments now. And if you're not making that investment, it could actually impact your company when those other companies order that equipment from you. And if you're self-employed, you can deduct 100% of the health care expenses incurred by you and your family. And if you hire new employees, or if you previously have been, uh, if you hire new employees who have been previously unemployed, you get a tax break for doing that. And if you have, and if you're, uh, if you, uh, a small business, uh, the cost of offering health care to the employees of your small business entitles you to a tax credit. Under the health care recovery uh, or the health care uh, bill that was passed, there's no requirement that small businesses offer health care to their employees. No penalties if you don't offer health care to your employees. But if you do, you get a tax credit. So along with these significant tax measures, the administration has provided more direct assistance to AAPI firms. AAPI small businesses have won over a billion dollars in new government contracts, and the Small Business Administration has awarded minority-owned firms with grants for cutting-edge research and development. And because so many of you have family, friends, and other contacts in countries all around the world, and many of you are immigrants from places all around the world, we've also made AAPI outreach an important part of our national export initiative. Uh, with the languages that you speak and the understanding of different cultures and history, the federal government has extensive services uh, for those interested in exporting their goods and services around the world. In fact, uh, uh, almost half of our 
economic growth and recovery in the last year has been because of the increase in exports. And what American companies make, and so many of you make, is highly desired and greatly valued all around the world. And we at the SBA, uh, at the Commerce Department, Export-Import Bank, and your state and local government have great programs to help you find those buyers and customers around the world. In fact, that's what our foreign commercial service officers do uh, in some uh, 80 countries around the world, hundreds of cities around the world. Their sole job is to find buyers and customers for your American-made goods and services. And all of these investments are starting to pay off. Economic growth is accelerating, consumer confidence is uh, improving and increasing, and we're confident that job creation will pick up. In fact, the recent uh, figures coming out today show that unemployment has dropped to 9.4 percent, and actually private sector employment grew uh, by 113,000 in just this year alone, 2010, uh, about uh, 1.3 million jobs uh, of people in, in terms of improved employment. But despite, uh, uh, we know that things are still tough out there. We know that a lot of people would like to work more hours, and there's still too many people without a job. Uh, but despite these continued hardship among uh, some Asian American Pacific Islanders, AAPI business owners are more likely than other business owners to hire, retain employees, and actually uh, spur economic growth. But there's plenty of work left to be done. And even as we meet here somewhere in America, some mom and dad are sitting uh, at the kitchen table. They can't sleep because they're worried about their future. Uh, they can't pay their bills. They're working, uh, or they're working hard to try to find money to pay the rent, uh, feed their children, and put clothes on their backs. Uh, they're just finding it hard to catch up or just to stay even. And unfortunately, they're not alone. Um, but the best way that we can help these parents and, and all people throughout America with this anxiety is to create new jobs and create new opportunities. And that's where all of you come in. In the coming months, more than uh, 20 executive departments and agencies will be select, soliciting input from the Asian American Pacific Islander community, like the one assembled here. We want your ideas on how we can expand opportunities and remove roadblocks uh, to federal government programs. And I hope all of you will leave here informed uh, as to what we're doing to help, but I also want to make sure that you tell us what we can do better not just at the federal level, but also at the local and the state level. Because there are unique challenges still facing the AAPI community, such as language barriers or the lack of awareness of many of the programs that government offers from the state, local, even to the federal level, which is why the White House initiative and summits like this are still necessary. When it comes to new ideas, our only criterion is whether or not they work. We don't care if it comes from a Democrat or Republican, from the boardroom, or from academia. We simply will not rest until every American who wants a job has a job. Before I wrap up, I want to emphasize that this summit is a two-way street for information and communication. So we need your active participation. We need your ideas. We need your thoughts. I also want to note uh, in closing just how integral AAPI entrepreneurs and small businesses are to Silicon Valley's economic dynamism and success, playing a key role in innovations in technology, clean energy, health, IT, and other uh, sectors. It was reported in the Wall Street Journal a couple weeks ago that the tech revival here in Silicon Valley was already helping lift the overall California economy. And over the last six months, the unemployment rate in Silicon Valley has dropped faster than the rest of the state. And since late 2009, this region has accounted for nearly 12,000 of the 66,000 jobs, or one out of six, that California has added since the recession. For the President recognizes that Asian American Pacific Islander entrepreneurs and small business owners help drive U.S. leadership in high-tech sectors, and that making this a summit, a vital part of our efforts to promote progress that ripples throughout the economy, not just in California, but throughout the country. And our speakers here today include some of Silicon Valley's leading entrepreneurs and venture capitalists who will share their perspective on 
working with and benefiting from government programs and resources. So it's my hope that this summit will provide a forum for people to exchange ideas, encourage new con uh, conversations, and move thoughts and ideas into action. And with the talent and the expertise that we've assembled here today, I have no doubt that the AAPI community, at least here in Silicon Valley in Northern California, will find some successful partnerships that will lead to success in the long term. America boasts a great legacy of innovation, and that's true of Asian Americans and Pacific Islanders uh, in particular. Someone in this audience could be the next Jerry Yang, a person who changes the world with his or her idea or some new business concept. Maybe it's a clean energy uh, technology or a new way for people to communicate, or maybe it's medical devices. Whatever it is, President Obama has pledged to support and encourage those Americans seeking to unleash their entrepreneurial passion. And gatherings like this one are an important step toward that goal. So I'd like to thank you all again for coming. In fact, we have an overflow crowd, and uh, Microsoft is just going to have to build a bigger campus, I guess. Uh, and a bigger auditorium. But thank you all again for coming. And I know that we have uh, people in another room uh, watching in and participating. Uh, but we very much look forward to hearing of your ideas and your recommendations and ultimately hearing of your continued success. Good luck and have a great conference. Thank you. <laughs>
green tech, investment, and innovation. And recently, in fact, just yesterday, California is proud to announce that we have 31 of the 100 most significant clean tech companies in the world. Not in the state, not in the United States, in the world, 31 are here in the state of California. Massachusetts is second with only seven companies, and Texas has only two. The Silicon Valley is proud to be the biggest high-tech, the largest high-tech manufacturing center in the United States. Silicon Valley also has the highest concentration of high-tech workers. 286 out of every 1,000 private sector workers in high-tech are here. As for contributions from the Asian Pacific Islander contrib uh, to the California economy, there are over 500,000 Asian Pacific Islander-owned businesses generating over $180 billion in annual revenue. That's 10% of California's annual gross state product and a major contribution to the California economy. That's more than Wyoming, Idaho, New Mexico, and Montana combined. Yes, give yourself a round of applause. That's also more than the gross domestic product of Singapore, Chile, or the Philippines. When our office was formed, we gathered around three words, inspiration, innovation, and opportunity. Utilize those key words. Take advantage of the network that you have here today, of the opportunities that will come forth today. Don't fear innovation. Embrace it, invest in it, invest in learning it, bring it to your businesses, and take advantage of the foreign markets that are out there that lay forward uh, with these new technologies. With that, I want to thank you again and welcome you to the state of California. Thank you, Joel. Good morning, everyone. My name is Mia Saika Chen. I serve as advisor on community engagement for the White House Initiative on Asian Americans and Pacific Islanders. I want to thank you all so much for packing the house tonight. We're so, or today, we're so excited to have you all. Right now, we're going to have a 15-minute break, and so we're going to reconvene here exactly at 10 a.m. to start the morning plenary. We have an awesome lineup, um, so please uh, take um, time in the lobby, have refreshments, and reconvene here in 15 minutes. Thank you.